Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Eclipse IDE with LWJGL 3.1. The last time I made this video was with 3.0 and they have updated the API quite a lot since then. So the setup is different. Anyways, let's continue. I'm expecting that you already have your Java development kit already installed and I'm already expecting you to have your IDE installed. I am not going to show you how to do that in this video. So the first thing you're going to want to have is LWJGL, which could be found in the link in the description to either its GitHub page or the actual website, which is this, where you want to download this from. So let's go ahead and go to download. And this choice is yours. You can either download the release, the stable, and the nightly. So let's get started downloading the release. So you have the choice to whether you want this to be a Maven project, a Gradle or an Ivy project. I just prefer the zip bundle. Not only that, but LWJGL comes with a lot of multiple APIs. It comes with Vulkan. It comes with OpenGL, OpenAL, Nuclear. It comes with GLFW. All of these of which you'll need, and you can select which ones you want depending if you're going with 3D or 2D. So, since I'm going to keep this video universal to fit with all my other series that I'll start with LWJGL, I'm going to have everything selected, and as an added bonus, you can select the add-ons with it as well, which I am not going to do because I already have them. Go ahead, click on download zip, and it'll do all of this. It's packing every jar file into a zip, and it's going to allow you to save. All right, now we have everything we could possibly have. All of these jar files, what do I do with them? Well, that's a simple answer. I'm going to move this out of the way for right now. And I am going to focus on creating a new project. I'm going to call my LWJGL program. So within your my LWJGL program, you're going to want to create a folder and you could call it library. And then just take everything in here from LWJGL to LWJGL dash XX hash. Oops, I didn't hold shift. Take all of these and just drag it into the library folder. Now you have all your libraries. So let's get set up. The first thing you want to do is click on your project and press Alt Enter. This will bring up the properties for your project. Next, you're going to go to Java Build Path, and then you're going to add jars. Now, if you're following my videos, here are the jar files you're probably going to want. 
you're going to want all of the asymp, asymp, the natives included. This is for 3D. If you plan on going 2D, you're not going to need that. You are definitely going to need GLFW. This API allows us to create the windows and render stuff to the window. The next API you're going to want is OpenAL. This allows us to add audio into our game. Next, you're going to want OpenGL and its natives as well. And this allows us to render our game to GLFW. The next thing you're also going to want to have is the STB library and its natives. And last but not least, the LWJGL jar itself and its natives, which are under nano VG here. And that should be everything you need to import. It's a lot to import, but it's what makes your games work. So I'm not just going to leave you off here into the wilderness. I'll give you some code to create your first window with GLFW. So I'm going to create the main class. And inside the main class, I'm going to import static, org, lwjgl, and glfw, glfw, asterisk. This is going to import everything within glfw, almost everything, but the necessities that we need to create our window. Now that we can get started with all this, the first thing you're going to want to do is test something. And we're going to be testing GLFW in it. Make sure you put an exclamation mark in front. So if it returns false, then something has gone wrong. And then we can throw a new illegal state exception failed to initialize GLFW. This GLFW init function initializes everything GLFW needs so we can create our window. And if this fails, you're not going to be able to use GLFW. The next thing you want to do is create a long variable and call it window and set this to glfw create window and we'll set the width to 640 the height's going to be 480 the title I'll just call it my lwjgl program Leave the monitor at zero and leave the share at zero. The monitor allows us to switch our window into full screen. I'm not going to cover that in this, so leave it at zero. And the second one allows you to share contexts, which is what OpenGL wants and uses, with other windows that you have. So you can create two windows and render the same thing on them without using too much memory. Now we need to see if GLFW has indeed created the window. So if not window, 
or, oh, I'm sorry, I'm used to C++. Anyways, if window is equal to zero, then it hasn't created the window. So we'll throw a new illegal state exception, failed to create window. I also like to do this, glfw set window hint, or is it just window hint? It's just window hint. And use glfw visible, glfw false. And you'll see why in a couple seconds. We are going to center the window. So we're going to create a glfw vid mode. And this is going to have everything about our monitor pretty much. So I'll call it video mode. And this should be glfw get video mode and then glfw get primary monitor. If you wanted your window full screen, replace this monitor right here with this exact function, and then you'll get yourself a full screen window. So, all we need to do is set glfw set window pos. Here is where that long variable will come in. We'll pass in window and we'll pass in for xpos video mode get or is it just width? It's just width. Video mode dot width plus our width for the window which is 640 put this in parentheses and divide it by two. And it's going to be the same thing for the Y pos. Video mode height plus 480 divided by two. Now that we set the position of the window to the center of our monitor, I think it's safe to say that we can finally show our window using glfw show window. So we can run this and our window will just flash for probably just a second. And it flashed in the complete opposite direction. I'm sorry, this should be minus 640 and minus 480. And now it should be in the center. There, now it flashed. Well, how do I stop this? This is, this is dumb. Well, we need to update the window. And we can do this by creating a while loop. glfw window should close, pass in window. Oops. and make sure you have an exclamation mark in front of it. So if the window shouldn't close, then we're gonna continuously update until the window wants to close. And in here, all we have to do is glfw pull events. Go ahead and run. And there you go, you got your first window going. The last thing you're gonna to wanna to do to your code, it's very simple, is glfw terminate. This closes out of glfw. It basically cleans up everything for us so we don't have to. And this is the code you'll need to get started with everything else.